Today we're going to be discussing the biomechanical implications of patellofemoral rehabilitation. For me, this is a pretty exciting topic. Um, I think um, if you've looked at some of my manuscripts and some of the things that I've published in the past and presented on, um, you'll know that uh, I'm fond of the biomechanical implications of how our exercises work and how our examination techniques may work um, and really what we can do to enhance our efficacy of, of our treatment and examination techniques. So today's presentation we'll be discussing the biomechanical implications that are specific to how we rehabilitate people with patellofemoral pain. Um, and this is obviously a pretty challenging uh, patient population for most of us. Um, you can see that that over anyone's given lifespan, you've probably come across quite a few patellofemoral patients. And they, they say up to 25% of our population will experience some symptoms of patellofemoral pain uh, over the course of their life. Um, it's a, it's a very challenging type injury, and it's unfortunately very common for us as well. Um, so the unique nature of the joint and the actual function of the, the patella, which is basically just a lever to increase the mechanical advantage of the quadriceps, just make it extremely susceptible to, to forces and, and injuries. Um, it's such a challenging uh, diagnosis and joint to work with that uh, one physician, Scott Dye in California, who is a patellofemoral expert, um, has termed it the black hole of the knee. So um, obviously a very daunting name um, for this type of pathology, but um, unfortunately that's, it's probably because there's so many theories regarding what the actual source of patellofemoral pain is and what the best treatment then is. Um, obviously, treatment will be based on the, on the source of the pain. So uh, for us, we're going to talk a little bit about this, but mostly stick to just more of the biomechanical implications. But 